70 to 63 with 51 seconds to go. And the game will tell him to you in a minute. Magley throws it and clear, and it goes in. Well, there's a replay of uh, Magley with a, what you call a basic uh, a prayer. Hey, what's going on? It's the odd man, Oddly Stevenson, NBL Canada Live, and I'm sitting next to the brand new, newly appointed uh, Commission National Basketball League of Canada, former coach of the Brampton A's, Dave Magley. Thanks, Oddly. Excited to be here, and, and, and from a coach's perspective, I always respect what you do, and now as a commissioner, I'm really excited <laughs> to work with you. Well, hey, I, I mean, I've always appreciated, you know, the conversations that we had, because you know, we, we talked a lot about the, the scores, the outcomes, the games, but now we're, you know, these conversations are moving very much about the viability of the league and, you know, growth and success and all these, and these are great conversations to have, aren't they? Well, it's, it's, it's good because there's some, there's some core tenets that, that, that we have to do right, yeah. and, and, and I think that um, it's exciting times because never in our in our league's history has our board of directors been as, as solid as they are right now. So, so when you have you know eight nine folks that really are on the same page, wanting to go the same direction, and, and understanding we we've got to do what we've got to do, and some may need to sacrifice opinions sometimes for the greater good of of, of the cause. That's good stuff. Mm -hmm. So I, I think you know f for whatever reason, whatever happened. Um, created this environment of, of cooperation. Right. And with that, there's something that can be built from it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think when we talk about sort of whatever happened, I think there's a positive that comes out of that. And you know, a thing I've oftentimes uh, said is that I think many people are waiting for great things that come from the league and how they come through these periods of adversity. And you know, sure, game seven and all that went with it happened, but here we are now really optimistic of what's going ahead. Yeah, I, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that Anybody would ever choose for that to be, and I wouldn't say that it's necessarily a good thing that what happened, but I think the reaction to something that was negative uh, has been very positive. And if the league has struggled to be on the same page for three years, in the fourth year to have this occur, I think is an exciting thing. It's exciting to see um, Vito stepping in and working with Andre, mm -hmm. and it's exciting to see uh, you know, uh, Ian's become really close with Dardis, and it's become, you know, this environment of ownership group where, 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 where Duncan and James really communicate pretty good together, and and and, and Henry, and now the and, and the new group in Niagara, these guys are all working really, really well together, and all of them understand the need for us to get solid ownership, local ownership in Moncton. So you look at those nine entities and say. I think we're building a real team, and and with that grouping, we can then get a lot done. Sure. And I think sure. that being on the same page and it's going to be exciting. Well, and it makes your role stepping into this kind of guiding the ship, so to speak. It makes it that much easier when everyone is on the same page. Well, and, and you know, like the good news for me is, is um, I think these folks trust me. Right. And and when you're trusted, they don't question my motives, mm -hmm. and, and and my motives are not for self, right. they're, 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 they're to take their vision and implement it. Um, this isn't about a great commissioner, right. it's really about a, a movement of basketball in Canada that is exciting. Right. It's an exciting brand of Canada, of, of basketball, and a great country for basketball. A great country to live, I just got a new OHIP card, so I'm thrilled. <laughs> um, but it's, it's, it's an exciting time for our league, right. and so for me, you know, and everybody goes, why would you want to take over now? When would you ever want to take over? I, I don't want to take over for David Stern. Right. I mean, my goodness, he's, he, he did a heck of a job. Sure. I want to take over for Lawrence O'Brien when, right. when the league was struggling to make a buck and, and people go look at what Stern did. So for me, I'm, I'm at a chance now that I've got, I've got very motivated owners, uh, a very motivated board, and a lot of opportunity ahead of me. So I'm real excited. The, the two years you spent in the league as a head coach of the Brampton A's, uh, certainly I can see where that, that's been beneficial for you in this new role because you've been a part of the league. You've mm -hmm. seen it. You know the players. You know the key pieces. That, that really sort of helps with your, the, that process of you getting familiar with your new position. Well, and you know, my, my relationship with James Tipping has been such that you know, I've been a part of this thing from, from before it was born. I mean, when Andre first approached us at the first combine, we hosted and said, you guys ought to own a team. Right. Well, the term guys was a little bit loose because I, I couldn't put 300 pennies together, let alone $300,000 to buy a team. 
But, you know, James's vision from day one was he needed another tool, another venue to help showcase young men. He had the high school thing he was building and right. the CIS and collegiates already built out, but man, a pro team, that made a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Coach Mags, I'd be interested if you'd be a part of that. So, you know, we researched the markets, we, we did everything we could and, 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 and put together a strategy and, and, and executed on that. So kind of from the beginning all the way through, which then allowed me to be as a general manager, a little more privy to behind the curtains of what was going on. So yeah, I've got a pretty good feel for what's, what's happened and, and what we need to do to go forward. How tough is a step away from being a coach to this role? Real tough. Yeah. That's the hardest decision because I really enjoy the guys. Yeah. And um, I, I, I've got a very specific philosophy about coaching that's different than most. I mean, I, I believe if I can get young people to believe in each other and believe in a system that ultimately sacrifice a few minutes to play better and harder right. and in exchange for that, I won't curse you, I won't, you won't raise right. my voice, I won't, I won't do things that are that I think I wouldn't want someone treating my own children that way. Mm. And and I wanted to have success with that. And, and we had good success. Would have liked to get a ring, but you know, only one team does. And, and we were, we had, you know, a very positive record and, and really happy with, with, with our experience here. So, you know, I, I think it's, it's the right way to do right. this. And so for me to move into the next generation of my life, I've been reinventing myself a lot, a lot in my life. So this is exciting. Uh, speaking of excitement, let's sort of move ahead into sort of the next steps for you when we talk about the future, not just for you, but in terms of the, the league itself. And uh, where do you see sort of the, the immediate steps for you that you've got to sort of focus on and pay some attention to? Well, I, 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 I need to heed and, and, and respect our incredible fan base. And so I'm going on a, on a tour that's starting next week in mm -hmm. St. John's and we'll, St. John will be in every market in, in, in the country that we're in currently. And it's basically to say, fans, reporters, give us your view of this league. Tell me what's going on. Tell me what you think we can do better. Tell me, tell me I'm a big boy, I can handle it. Tell me what it is. And some negative may come out, but I think some really good ideas and, and most importantly, they have a chance to be heard. Right. Transparency is a big deal. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and when there's the when there's no transparency and, and people think they, 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 they fill in the gaps with everything else. And and when I look at that odd, I think that's part of the problem is mm -hmm. we haven't necessarily been as open with everything in our league. And so people think this is happening when it really right. isn't. And right. they they've got these motives that are attached to things that aren't real and genuine ownership that really cares about their guys does exist. Mm -hmm. We haven't done a very good job of, of teaching that yet and explaining that. So I think by going on this listening tour, town hall tour, whatever yep. you want to call it, I think that gives me a chance to understand what, what I'm doing. A. B. We want to secure everything we do and make certain that Niagara continues to grow and build and franchises that struggle where we're trying to shore them up. C. We're going to go on a, a 15 city um, combine tour this, this spring and, and summer and, and, and even into the fall of the season we move back to get across this country and, and, and the U.S. Uh, who we are, right. to see talent right where they are so they're not spending exorbitant amounts of airplane tickets yep. to fly. We're giving mm -hmm. them a chance. Um, and, and we should generate a little revenue for the league. Mm -hmm. So, you know, those things we think starts to change the narrative. All of a sudden we're seen as, as a league that's going to you and, and people know who we are. And, and, you know, as we shore up the ownership group in Moncton, that's very important. I'm hoping to get some wins on that early. If we can do that, then every organization feels better. Uh, we want to, we really want to fix um, any negative energy that's out there in any right. program. And, and we think we can, we can turn that tide one organization at a time. And then we have something to sell globally. So I've not committed any huge sponsorship success right. anytime soon. Right. Um, any big TV deals, any great expansion. Mm -hmm. Some of that may happen sure. just along sure. the line. But more than that, I want to fix what, what, what's broken. And it's not that it's bad, but make it better. Right. And then once right. it's better, then we have something to sell. Right. And then I think you'll see midsummer and and then late fall and things starting to come together for us so that we have maybe a win or two in those areas as well before the season starts. And it would seem that going into the, the, the fifth season, which is also a pretty big deal for a league, uh, basketball league here in Canada, that those are, when we talk about those little small wins, those are some good ones going into that fifth, fifth year. And, and, and the fifth year is huge. Yeah. I mean, I remember when the WNBA was going into the fifth year, right. they made the big deal that, that, that any franchise, any, any pro league that could make it five years is a legitimate shot. I don't believe the USFL made it five years. Right. You know, these, these, these leagues that are just on the verge that get a lot of money and good things happen and then they ultimately die, 
they didn't get past that fifth year. So we're going to get past that fifth year and, and continue to build and, and, and layer in more franchises and, and ultimately strategically fix where we're at. And I think it's going to be exciting. Uh, just for our fans, who, you know, I want to go back to the, the 15 t combine tour that the league will be going on. Uh, can, can you throw out a couple sort of spots where the league will be at? Just to give you an idea of how oh. wide this is. So the first one will be in South Bend, Indiana. Uh, South Bend, besides being my hometown, and I can get a gym at a pretty good price. Uh, it's it's within four hours of, of Chicago, Detroit, Cincinnati, Cleveland, Indianapolis. It's just a lot. It's a it's, it's a it's an easy place to get to Cincinnati. Um, then we'll be in, in, in right now tentatively in Los Angeles mm -hmm. um, in the, the 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 fifth of July. Um, maybe Northern California the next weekend. Um, there, we're going to be going to the D.C. area, the Virginia area later at the end of July, beginning of, of August. Uh, after that, we're going to be going into Florida a couple different times in different markets. We'll be going into Atlanta. We're going to go into um, Dallas, Texas. Uh, we're going to do something probably in the, the New York City, Philly region, and, and then maybe something upstate New York. And then along those lines, in August, September, October, we've already started laying plans for one in Edmonton, one in Calgary, uh, one in, one in um, Vancouver, and, and one in Halifax. So we bring four of them, maybe one in Quebec as well. So we bring four or five in, in here, and then the rest in the States. So across North America, people have heard about the NBL Canada. And we're gonna find some pretty good talent that's sure. been hiding under rocks and mm. maybe haven't had enough dimes to put in their pocket to Again. come let us be seen. Mm -hmm. And we go, wow, this is this is some really good players. And an interesting thing, what happened to those combines is the top three uh, players from those combines have an opportunity to come to the, the main one in the fall. Well, That's, yeah, so what, what the, the top three unsigned. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, uh, as, as the GM of the A's, we did five combines last year. Mm -hmm. Every combine had somebody assigned by our team. Uh, three of the five guys actually made our team. Uh, five guys made it the previous year. So, I mean, it really is a, 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 a tool and a vehicle to be seen and right. be signed immediately. But of the next group that don't get signed and, and aren't invited to their camps, the top three will be invited. Uh, you know, for to we will we, we, we'll waive their fee yep. and allow them to to, to still have to pay to get there to come to the, the draft combine sure. and be there with all nine organizations because. All nine organizations will participate in this combines mm -hmm. through reporting and video, and some will actually be there. So I'm right. assuming three or four will be at almost every combine, but they won't all be at every one. Right. But they'll all get the report, so they all have a good chance to pick those kids, and they'll call us and they'll say, Coach, what'd you think? And I'll say, you know, put my coach hat back on because I really like the kid. I take him, and right. he's a pass first versus shoot. You know, we can really explain it to him. So, I mean, we, we think the value is going to be real. And typically, oddly, in these combines, You'll do a big showcase event, sure. And it's in you know Atlanta, and it's for two teams in Lithuania with two foreign spots. Right. A hundred guys show up, and, and their odds aren't very good. Right. We have a hundred and eight spots to fill. We have you know thirty six have to be Canadian, but then there's another seventy two that can be Canadian or American. So when you look at that, where else can you go to an event and have that kind of opportunity? Now that assumes nobody signed from last year. Sure. And nobody's are, but but still. All these teams will win. Right. If you're that good, there's enough play in everybody's uh, roster right now that you're going to have a legitimate shot to make a make a team. Right. So it's 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 going to be good stuff. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, one last piece I want to touch on, and uh, an another hot spot throughout the, the past season, uh, the officiating. And I know, I know, and we've sort of dialogued about that. Well, as an important area that we want to look at as a league. And I know uh, the, the the board of governors, when they met, they talked about that as well in terms of changes and and wanting to get better. I wonder if you could sort of touch on that. Well, I think I, I think first of all, um, <laughs> it's amazing how I'm a commissioner, how the how the view of the officiating has changed. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the truth of the matter is, I, I, I think our refs have gotten a bad rap, um, I, and I didn't get a technical this year, and I'm proud of that. Mm -hmm. I deserve one. Right. I deserve one several times. I, I, I'm out of the box, I'm jumping right. up and down, I'm demonstrative. But relative to the guys on the other side, <laughs> I'm a pretty good guy. And you go, that shouldn't be what I'm judged against. Right. I should be judged against, my job is to be in that box, and my job is to speak calmly to the refs, my job is to be respectful. And that's what we're going to do first. We're going to we're going to give the refs back the power, and we're going to expect them. Listen, that coach was out at half court. He needed to be teed up. Put him back in his box. Sorry, love you guys that I coached with, but at the end of the day, we've got to bring decorum into our into our game. Players have one guy that can speak to the ref. 
you can't have everybody every play. It's just right. too much. Right. Uh, so we're going to try to put some of that in first. Then secondly, we're going to make the game a little easier to rough. You know, a guy catches the ball, and the FIBA rule allows you to hold the ball. Once you catch it and you put it on the floor, you've got the rest of the shot clock to do it. Right. So you could have the ball in 17, 18, 19 seconds, and you're banging, and you're banging, mm -hmm. and you're banging. And what happens is you force the defense to either flop, foul, right. and it's right. becoming – slows the game down. And right. so what we're going to do – you know, because we're a hybrid league rules-wise, we're going to put the NBA rule, which is I've got five seconds when I catch it to put it on the floor, and I got five more seconds once I dribble to get rid of that thing. I right. can shoot it. I can do something. We think that's going to speed the game up and make it a little easier to, to officiate. And then the last part is our refs do need to get a little better. So we're going to do a better job of reviewing them in the summer. You know, we've got a guy named Mike Falloon that, mm -hmm. that, that, that runs the refs. And, I thought he did a really nice job this year, and, and he did, he does more than scheduling. He's right. he's grading them and he's rating them. And he's going to do a lot of summer stuff in in in, in Toronto with mm -hmm. some of the summer leagues that we're working with, right. and we're going to really try to watch it closely. and And, and I'm going to get involved, and I'm going to empower him to do things right. And we're going to find players early, and we're going to collect that right. money, right. and we're going to get people's attention. Right. And you know, there's a. Um, Old adage, sometimes you've got to shoot a few hostages so they know you're serious, and our guns are loaded. So it's one of those things that, guys, when you come back to play this year, you better be ready to, 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 to clean up your act and play basketball the way we're supposed to. And, you know, we'll have no Game 7 conversation because mm -hmm. we're going to play basketball in the manner that, that, that all of us would be proud of, not just in Canada, but the whole world. You know, a big part of that, whether it's what we do, the officiating or anything else that the league does, will be the education, and will be how it's communicated, and will be how, how we tell fans and our supporters and our teams teams and you know everyone involved with the league and and the fact that you're out you know on this little you know follow the commission tour that you're on I think that's a big really good starting point of, of opening up those communication lines and saying hey we're here to talk so well the other uh, part of that is that then in the training camps yeah you know where Mike Flew can go to he's gonna go to where not he'll do it via Skype or video and I'll be at every training camp during mm -hmm. the during the period and, and we're gonna say guys here's the points of emphasis here's the new rules the points of emphasis yep. so we're looking so we're clear. I think that we're going to have this this level of kid, this level of player, because we're they're going to schools. Yes, sir. And one of the things we do best is, is we really impact the community. Yeah. When you go to any of our programs and you recognize these guys are in schools and they're touching lives and they're role models, that's really yeah. important. So we're going to focus on that and then the way they carry themselves in the court. Well, as an example, we talk about the NBA and you oftentimes look at the NBA and the things that they've done to institute change. And I think they've been very successful in how they've been able to change and adjust the culture. So well, can be done here? If, if if a player can go in the stands, yeah. beat up a fan, come down, see, the, see another fan come at him, knock him out, and then leave, and the league's attendance grow the next year, mm -hmm. what would they do? Right. NBA Cares was born. The guy started dressing better to press conferences. The, the game was called tighter, and things happened. Listen, we stubbed our toe, right. but nothing like that. They cut their foot off, right. and, and they still were able to make it work. So, you know, I'm, I'm pretty confident that the, that the adjustments we're making is going to send the right message to the players and to our fans that we do care, we do care. This will never happen again, it. and it's because of the way we, we play the game. It's, it's just it's not. It was kind of a perfect storm of occurrence, and that's that, that thing we've learned from. We're going to be better. Absolutely. Being better is really the goal this year. Heading into season number five, Coach Razzai, Coach Mags, Commissioner Mags uh, at the helm, uh, NBL Canada Commissioner, newly appointed. We're excited about the year moving forward. Mags, thanks for the time. The Yard Man, NBL Canada Live, signing off.